Hi, welcome to episode four. We've been having a fascinating discussion with Dr. Paul Blackham and Dr. Jay Smith on the Word of God. What is the Word of God? Who is the Word of God? And with that in mind, I want us to think about the biblical position of the Word of God. Remember, we asked four questions of the Quran. We asked, is it eternal? Is it sent down? Is it complete? And is it unchanged? Now, we know that there is a Word of God that is eternal, sent down, complete, and unchanged. Listen to this. This is taken from the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is an amazing uh, book in the Bible. I, it's almost as if it is a book that is unpacking the Old Testament for you. It's helping you understand the Old Testament. It's like it's a commentary on the Old Testament. It's amazing. And it really unites the Old and New Testaments together. And I love this um, particular verse because it talks about the Word of God. So listen to this. So this is Hebrews chapter 4. And verse 12 and onwards, for the word of God is living. Now, this is the biblical position of the word of God. The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, mm -hmm. but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. So the biblical position of the Word of God is a person who we give an account to and he sees all things and can cut right down through all the rubbish that's out there in the world, all the rubbish of our own lives, the thoughts and thinking and behavior. And this being cut through right, through right through that. And that is the Word of God. Fascinating, isn't yeah. it, when we look at that. Is there any idea of that in the Quran at all? No. Well, here's the fascinating thing, because those four categories that you gave are not us asking them. That's what the Muslims claim themselves. Yeah. They claim that this is eternal. They claim, and the Quran itself claims that in chapter 85, verse 22. They claim that it was sent down over a 22-year period. They claim that it is complete by the time it was written down at the time of Uthman, and that since the time of Uthman till today, that's 1400 years, there's not, not just not unchanged, they say there's not one word unchanged, they say there's not one letter unchanged, they say there's not even a dot that's been changed. Sounds very divine to me. <laughs> yeah, that's like all of those things I've said, that's Jesus, yeah. and they say, no, no, they like, this is it. How, how can a, a, a mere thing put together mm. by human beings yeah. be that? I, it's they not would possible. Say it's not put together by human beings. Now, oh, yeah. what we want to do yeah. in this episode is start to unpack that and start to destroy that notion that there was this eternality, this perfect, this uh, almost uh, unfettered by human hands is what they're saying. And we're going to show just how human it is. Because when you were explaining about this Uthman with one copy and nine perfect copies yeah. of that made and perfectly preserved down through the centuries. And then you, I was saying, well, surely there's five or six of these perfect copies around. I remember you saying, even one would be good. And when we looked at it, and I'm, there isn't anything like that. No, and see, we've already now shown that not only can we not find the nine, we can't even find the one. But even the ones that we do have, we were looking at some of these right here, yeah. like this one here, which is from the uh, Tashkent, top, I'm sorry, copy, top from copy from Istanbul. From Istanbul. Uh, this one here is the Petropolis. This is one is from, from Paris. Paris. And then this one, oh, they're so heavy. This one <laughs> here is the one in the British Library. These three that we have right here are the earliest they have. Not one of these three agrees with each other. Not one of these three is complete. Yeah, not one, one of, of these three are from the time of Uthman. Yeah. And you said one of them only has 40%. Well, that's 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 the that's the Samarkand and also the, the, sana. the, the sana, which is the, yeah. one, the, the one at the bottom here. Only up to chapter 43 out of 114 surahs. See, what's happened to the rest of it? Well, well yeah. this wasn't this the thing to God above all else? If it is the last revelation, yeah. as Muslims tell us, isn't that right, yeah. Beth? Every Muslim says this is the last, the final. This is the one that supersedes everything else. This is what abrogates that which yeah. comes before. The law of abrogation in chapter 2, verse 106, and chapter 16, verse 101 in the Quran is actually nothing to do with other scriptures. It's with to do with between the Medina and the Meccan yeah. surahs. Muslims take that and say, well, no, this abrogates the previous scripture because this is the perfect. But if this is the eternal, perfect, unchanged, sent down word of God, yeah. why does it need law of abrogation? Uh -huh. I mean, why, oh, yeah, why, why does yeah, the, the answer Allah to that, there is an answer to that. the preserved tablets, presumably, yeah. why would he contradict himself within his own preserved tablets? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. We have 
preserved tablets. We have the Ten Commandments yeah, yeah. Um, that are eternal laws of God, and we all sign up to them. But there's no contradiction in yeah, them. Yeah, you don't. Have okay. A, now this is where they'll come back to you. And, the, yeah, and this, what's is, the this, is, this is a good argument. They do have a good argument. Uh, if you look at this here, you have references in here which says to uh, go into Jericho and kill all men, women, and children, yeah, and all yeah, living yeah, things yeah, in yeah. Cha Joshua chapter six twenty. Yeah. Now we don't go into any place and kill all men, women, and children. Yeah. In fact, that was only for that time at that place at yeah. that and, and with those led, people led by the word of God. First, Joshua himself. First Samuel yeah. fifteen, yeah. the same thing again. Yeah, uh, to destroy every living thing. Now you come to the New Testament, and yeah. Jesus says to lay down your sword, for he who lives by the sword dies by the sword in Matthew 26, verse 52. So it seems to be there's a contradiction there. Okay? Yes, but over 1,500 years, there's this historical event, and then there, so isn't this what do in we the lifetime that? of one person? So we though? call that progressive revelation. That's the sort of thing that Christians say, isn't okay. it? Yeah. Now, what Muslims will say, the same thing exists here. When you but look the, at... But if it's an eternal document, there is no okay, progress. Hold on, hold on. Okay. This is also a... You, they would say that this is a book for all peoples, all places, and all time. They're yeah. not saying it's eternal. Uh, and that's we the point. That claim. All peoples, all places, all ah, times. But, yeah. the, but the Old Testament paradigm and the Old Testament of violence, we don't longer use today with the gospel of Jesus Christ, do we? Yeah, I see the point. Okay. Yeah, okay. So they're taking the same notion. Remember, they got it from us. Okay. But that makes sense, as you said, over 1400 years. Oh. Because what God was doing with Joshua yeah, in 1400 BC, yeah. that stays in 1400 yeah. BC. We don't do that anymore today. Yeah. We don't sacrifice anymore today. We don't also circumcise. Ouch to me, ouch yeah. to the goats, and ouch <laughs> to the, my enemies if I have to destroy them. Can you then understand why it's very important that we put the context of what oh, was yeah. happening in 1400? Totally. Now they will say, okay, the same thing exists here. You take this book and you basically split it in half. That would be Medina and this would be Mecca because it goes from right to left because it follows the Arabic. Yeah. Rule of thumb, those are mostly Medina and this is mostly Mecca. Mecca over here is all peace. Medina is full of violence. So they're saying, aha, the law of abrogation, chapter 2, verse yeah. 106, and chapter 16, verse 101, was to eradicate this, these contradictions between these two halves. Because if you have peace over here and then you have an enormous amount of violence, you always go with the law of abrogation. But here's you the problem. Go to the violent bit then. Ah, because yeah. what does the law of abrogation say? Yeah. That which we give, which is mansuk, yeah. we now give something better, that means it comes after, yeah. nasik. The nasik abrogates the mansuk. Well, this over yeah. here, the peace is abrogated by the violence. Ooh, I love so that. So that's the opposite. That'd be like saying Jesus says peace, but let's go with the kill everybody one. Exactly. So even <laughs> But it's not even that it's, no. you can't even equate it. I mean, we're getting yeah, slightly off topic, really, but you but can't yeah. equate it really with even the Old yeah. Testament because the violence in the Quran has nothing to do There's with no limits a, on it. Yeah. A heinous evil that's yeah. happened to the world. Interestingly it's not enough, specific to any one time well, or one place. Specific. Well, this yeah. is what's interesting. I was in, I took the taxi into uh, into the studio this morning and I was talking to a Hindu um, fellow yeah. And he asked me what I did, and I talked about I research Islam and Islamic history and Christian history and so on. And the topic of violence came up, and we were talking about how when you look at ISIS today, mm. most people in the world saw that it was right to stop ISIS. Even Muslims themselves, mm. many Muslims believed it was right to stop ISIS because they saw the heinous acts of what ISIS was doing. Mm. My question is this, if we human beings who do not know all things, do not see all things and are pretty, you know, not perfect people, yeah. that we as human beings saw it right to stop ISIS, why on earth wouldn't God think it's right to stop ISIS? God who sees all things, mm. he would see it's right to stop an evil act. And that's what we see happening in the Old Testament. It's what we see Jesus will judge at the end of time yeah. as well. And he is today is judging mm. today as well. But in the Quran, it's not the same sort of judgment. It's very different. It is an imperialist is moving in and taking over and controlling and it's destroying people simply because they're not Muslims. Destroying mm. simply because they're enemies of Islam. Unbelievers. Unbelievers. Okay. I mean Literally. we presumably would be unbelievers and we were the ones that presumably they would be allowed to attack if they took the Quran seriously. Mm. So e you can't even equate what's here in the Quran with mm. the text of the Old Testament. Now we're, we're, we're let's going let's on let's a tangent what a we're saying. Bit. Let's take it one step further. When you, when you stop and you ask why, well this is the book that comes to abrogate this book. Yeah. If that is the case, the law of abrogation they're using to support that, right. actually use it to its, actually th throw it right back yeah. at them. Say, let's look at that law of abrogation. Actually, the law of abrogation is only for the Quran only, and it's to eradicate the Meccan surahs and make the yeah. needed surahs as authoritative over the Meccan surahs, which means it's the sur it's the references of violence that are yeah, therefore normative for us today. Yeah. Do you really want to go that route? Well, they have that to. Shuts they have that to. Down. They that's have to. that's in there. That's why, yeah. and it shuts down that argument that's, real quickly. So then you ask them, well, then where is there any reference in this book that says this abrogates that book? 
Yeah, it says it just the say opposite. That. Chapter 10, no. verse 94. Chapter 21, verse 7. If you have any question, go to this book. Because, listen, Jay, some of my more liberal Muslim friends, they always go to the peace verses and say those are, that's the real Islam. That's the abrogated but, part. Yes, but, but many liberal, yeah. moderate Muslims really pick and choose. Like yeah. If you read a liberal, moderate Muslim's book, so a, f a couple of examples would be a book called My Way. Yes. Another example would be another book um, called The House of Islam. You'll see, one, they don't footnote very much, but when they do choose the verses, it's just specific verses, and the whole theology is built on those particular those. verses they've pulled out, of, they out of context. And they tend to be those... Uh, tend to be from the first to half. Be from the first I'm going yeah. to play the Mickey right here. Give me okay. one verse that's peaceful in, the, in even either side of the Quran. Give me one verse. Well, they think about no compulsion in religion. Chapter two, verse two, five, yeah. six. Did you read the rest of the verse? You go to hell if you reject. So it's pretty. Look at the very next verse. Compulsion. If compulsive. those who stand or with Allah, compulsion. or those who do against the Prophet or his or, uh, or Allah is a Prophet, chapter two, verse two, five, six. What does it say? Great shall be their perdition in hellfire. So now tell me if there's no compulsion. Okay, so that one, that one's not the best one then, I but think that's the one I'm no, There's no compulsion in religion. Yeah, just in the wrong path. Oh, uh, yeah. There it is. That's for those who just put, yeah, they're dwellers now, in the fire. Now, in Christianity, they were, we so know that if you reject the, the Lord. Just read okay, the rest of the context. Keep reading. And yeah. what you say, and then the next that's question is... That's the best is, one. No, there's one better than that. All right, what's five, Chapter 5, verse 32. Yeah. Yeah, that's a oh, fascinating Jews, one. Oh, Jews, oh, oh, children of Israel, those if, if those who take the blood of one is if he takes the blood of all. Yes. Those who save the blood of one okay, is if he saves yeah, the blood of all. That one's on a bus. I saw it on a bus yesterday. And Obama used that yeah. and all the politicians yeah. use that. Yeah. Now let me ask you, who's if this to? It's to look the, the Jews. Th look if at the you, beginning. The, who does it say? If yeah. you ever see, if there's ever a terrorist attack, that's what you'll have people um, yeah. quoting we as if it's a peaceful verse. Children of Israel. Israel. Is that Muslims? Oh yeah, that's just for the children of Israel. Okay, so what's for the Muslims? Read the very next, next verse. verse. The recognition of those who made you against Allah and his mercy. They should be killed or crucified. All their hands and their feet be cut off from if opposite you're an sides. Enemy of Islam. That's for the Muslims and you and me. The very next verse is the application. Why is it Obama and all the other pundits didn't read the very next verse? And a great because 32 is, is only for, Christ for Jews. Verse 33 is for the rest of us. And look at what is it if you stand against his messenger, messenger? And his Allah? Do you yeah. stand against Allah? Well, I, ha I have to. Do you to, stand yeah. against Muhammad? Well, I have to. Then you yeah. have to be crucified. And now, hands and feet cut off. Can you see why ISIS used this verse in oh, yeah. Aleppo? They used this verse to support all the crucifixions they had there. Wow. They just so quoted even their own Quran. the bits that people say, well, here's a good bit. It's you're like say, just read the next verse. Read the verse. And it's usually one of the worst bits. The yes. worst part. So be careful. You need, if you're going to look at yeah. the Quran, you must do like we do with the Bible. We say this context. all the time. Yeah. Look at the context, yes. read the whole chapter, re see what the author yeah. intended. That's called, called good exegesis. That's Jesus. good, isn't it? Because what's I know, fascinating, oh yeah. sorry, uh, just yeah. to interrupt. <laughs> and what's fascinating, let's take um, the story of when they did go into Jericho. You have Rahab, who oh, was yeah. a prostitute. So talk about being an enemy of God in her yeah. lifestyle and her morality. And most of our Muslim friends would agree with that. But she she and her whole family were saved, and they walked around those walls of Jericho many yeah, times. Yeah. They had plenty Seven of opportunity yeah. to um, to respond. And yeah. if God saved Rahab, He would have saved others. But yeah. what kind of people were there? We did had a sermon yeah, recently yeah, I know. on that. And they were um, killing their children, recently. throwing their children into the fire, and all this sort of thing. And it's lovely the fact that this per this Rahab just says, "Well, can I join you guys?" And the Lord's like, "Yeah, sure." And okay. it was like lovely. That so that's really interesting. So let's get back to these yeah. two books because what we're what what Muslims are claiming is this is to supersede that book. Yes. This is to abrogate that book. When we're yeah. finding out, it's just the other way around. Yeah. If anything, this is a lot more applicable. Yeah. In fact, I can't find any violence in the New Testament yeah, at yeah. all. I can't find any verse to, uh, that says that we're to do what the Old Testament says. And that's why I love to go to Matthew 5. Because Matthew 5, Jesus very clear said, I have not come to destroy that. Yeah, yeah. I have come to fulfill it. And then he yeah. gives six applications of what he means by fulfilling it. And, and that that's example where, where Peter tries to pull the sword to, to, to fight for him, and Jesus just says, hey, don't do that, put that away. And that's a really powerful thing. There's no example of anything like that. So yeah. if you want to ask, getting back to the whole thing, the literary yeah. criticism, we, we still want to get back to this idea. Yeah. Is this eternal? Is this sent down? Is it, uh, does it have, see, as they would say, this has no human imprint on it. That's what they're trying to get at. They're trying to elevate it so high because they have to, because they have nothing else to go to. Remember, no. the, at the very beginning, we started with this context. They only have two things. The Muslims have only two things to support everything they believe, one book and one man. 
Yes. And this is the book. In yeah. order to make this book and give it up there, they have to put it up high. They've the got miracle to make of the Quran. The miracle of the Quran, because the Quran makes that claim. Yeah. They've got to make that claim. And the idea that this book cannot be critiqued because it's not man-made. It is eternally, has always been, yeah. sent down by an angel. There's the, 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 the angelic part yeah. of it. To a man uh, that, that was appointed for the one. The only thing he was appointed yeah. to do was to, to give this. us this book. And then, of course... Which disagrees completely with the, anything that came before that doesn't follow at all with what any of the prophets of old taught mm. and completely contradicts it. And we could go and, and do a whole episode yes, just on that. We could, well, we could. But we're not going to do that. But, but also, uh, when I read this, I pick up this Quran and I read it, and it feels and looks, and when I read it, is extremely man-made. Even in the English language where they've got lots of um, commentary and brackets where it's added to make it more, more readable and understandable, which presumably in the Palatable. Arabic would be even Palatable, more yeah. difficult to understand. Politically correct. Yeah. So let's get back to this notion that therefore yeah. if it is from God, if it has no human intervention, we then are going to ask one simple question. Can we show any place where there is human imprint on it? Yeah. That's all we need to do. And we need to ask We've that. We've already asked yeah, quite a few questions book. concerning yeah. concerning the manuscripts. We looked at the six yeah, major yeah. manuscripts in the last episode. Uh, the top copy of the Samarkand, the Hamd, the Ma'il, uh, the Husseini, the Sana, and the Petropolitanus. Those are the six major ones that are in existence today. And it, what's fascinating, that none of them are complete. Another mark from the seventh century. The, what was that one that you did? You said, no, there was one that you didn't cover, but you said you were going to. The Sanaa. No, we're yeah. going to yeah. Okay, I'm okay. running. Yeah, I'm running because you promised. You're licking your yeah. lips. I'm leading up to it. That's right. what we're going to go to. So now we're going to ask. Yeah. Since we looked at those six manuscripts, we only yeah. really looked at the top kappa and yeah. we only looked at the Samarkand. Now we want to go to the Sana, which is the okay. most exciting one, because the Sana manuscript is the one that's just been just been discovered in 1975. Just discovered. 1975. Mm. And uh, it was discovered by accident. They were cleaning out the domes there in the Sana Mosque, which uh, in many old, man whenever you get an old manuscript, they like to preserve it so much that oh, they yeah. don't ever destroy it. And when it gets worn out, because as your people are wearing it, and it gets all the grease stains and all the rest, they then pre put them, then they, they cache them up in the domes of mosques, and they leave them there, and they forget about them. And they had forgotten about these manuscripts in Sana. So as they were cleaning the dome, they came across this trapdoor. They opened the trapdoor, and thousands of manuscripts fell to the wow. ground. Wow! Yeah, not a lot of them they could read, but they came across this one manuscript that they could not read. And the reason they could not read it, remember what we said in the last episode? Yes. There were no diacritical marks. Ah. It had no diacritical marks. It had no. Is vowelization. So very early, in other words. Too early for any of them to read. So they had to find somebody who could read them, and they went to the German scholars. Now, right. isn't that interesting? They had to go to German scholars, wow. not Arab scholars, nor were these Muslims. They had to go to Saarbrücken, Saarland University in Saarbrücken, which is the, the Germans are way ahead of the rest of the world when it right. comes to reading archaic Arabic. Yeah. And yeah. they had to go to uh, Dr. von Bothmer, Dr. Oleg, and Dr. Gerd Prynne. Those three men. They flew them down in 1981 to look at this manuscript. They quickly saw that they had a treasure trove here because they realized that this is probably one of the earliest of all manuscripts wow. they ever come across. So Not I bet only because this was of this, amazingly accurate. So they quickly took pictures yeah. of it. They <laughs> took one, pictures of every page. I'm excited now. Put it into microfilms. Yeah. And then the Yemeni government started to overhear what they were saying, what they were finding, yeah. and they confiscated their microfilms. But what? when we find what? a Bible manuscript, yeah. it gets put all over the world, all over the yeah. newspaper, everywhere. You would think if it was a, 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 one of the earliest Qurans, right. the yeah. whole world would know about it and have yeah. access to read it so themselves. So the Yemeni government yeah. confiscated their microfilms. Why, though? Because and let they them must fly have, back to Germany. This must have been wonderful news for a Muslim. Well, this is the beauty of it. Why, like, why, see, isn't this the same thing that we'd heard earlier yeah. when uh, Uthman uh, didn't like yeah. these other manuscripts? What did he do? He oh. burned them. It sounds the so same sort of thing. So now we have another censorship going yeah. on. Why in this censor case, it though? Because it sounds fantastic, this. Well, you're going to see why. Oh. We're going to go open it. Now, they did finally release them in 1997, only on the only ones... Like the more Sodom than 15 years later. Well, the reason why was because, uh, well, actually, we're talking about 17, yeah, 16 yeah. years later, they finally released it on the, uh, because the Sutherland University finally let some of their scholars come up and they gave them a full scholarship. With the understanding that if they gave them a full scholar to, read, to study at Sutherland, that they had to release their microphone, which belonged to them anyways. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So, yeah. I went to see Gerprin in 1990, I think it was 1999 or 1998, and he showed me some of his, manus uh, his pictures of the manuscript. Now, I'm not permitted to tell you what he, uh, he showed me because that, that's for him to publish in his when own time. Yeah. 
Has For, it published yet? Well, that's 1999, right? We're now 2019. So almost 20 years, 20 years later, the, a book was actually, actually in 2017, finally a book was published. Right! I think we have it in our library, actually. You have it in your library. Well, I'm just gonna, we're going to put it up here on the screen. We're going to look at the slide here, and there oh. you can see. You are allowed right. to talk about it then. Now, of course, because it's published. Now we can, now oh, we can okay. talk about ah. it. <laughs> because this is, this is the called the sauna polymcest. Now, what is a polymcest? Do you know what a polymcest is? Yeah, it, is it? Oh, go yeah, on, no, go, go ahead. On, is it the writing beneath beneath the the yeah. top layer of the Arabic text? Is that correct? Yeah. What I want you to yes. do is I want you to look at this slide here. There you can see this is the solemn policy. So if you look, you can see in the blue picture. This is ultraviolet light. That's why it's blue. You can see the writing. The very that's the top layer. Yes. But you notice there's a lower layer. Yes. Yeah. And see what happens. This is written on. Parchment. Now, parchment are animal skins. Yeah, These are yeah. deer skins. And the great thing about deer skins is they're much more durable yeah. than papyrus. papyrus. You were talking about papyrus yeah. in a previous episode. Well, and we, that's we have Bible um, uh, yeah. uh, parchment that yeah. is from three, four hundred years earlier, like whole Bibles yeah, whole that Bibles are intact. On. But they're very expensive. Yeah, very, because very expensive. you've got to cure the skin, yeah. and then only very wealthy people. But yeah. remember, yeah. Jay, Islam conquered very, very quickly. But they'd yeah, got but to Europe to within a hundred years. Remember, and the why is it the yeah. Bible was not written on parchment? Yeah, this is. Why the Bible was not written on parchment because those in the early church were poor. Yeah. They didn't have this kind of finances, so they wrote on papyrus. Yeah. Now, can you understand why we don't have the originals? Oh yeah, because they were just l gone. They're papyrus the were the, the poor church. man's yeah, letter, man's, the poor man's, poor man's paper. Yeah. But for the rich people, yeah, they could use animal skins. Right. Now remember, the, we, the Sinaiticus is the most famous of yeah. our of yeah. our parchments. It's yeah. one of the earliest but, ones. But it's such an expensive yeah. thing, and there's a, it's so rare. To I have understand such a, that yeah. the New Testament of, yeah. of, of the Sinaiticus uh, uh, yeah. took sixty two gazelles okay. just to make there that one. There we go then. Yeah. So you can right. see why we're talking about someone who with a lot of wealth who would yeah. have to have it. Yeah. The nice thing about parchment is, first of all, it doesn't disintegrate. Yeah. And you can wa wash it off. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And have another go. And have another go. That's yeah. what they've done here. But why would you wash yeah. off? Well, why, Beth, well, let me ask you this. Well, if it's changed perfect, <laughs> you, wouldn't you, make to, a mistake. Oh, perfect, yeah. you wouldn't need if to. If you have a mistakes that you want to change, or if you're perfecting the script and you're changing, mm -hmm. like you write a poem, you find, oh, here's another version. Right, and after you yeah. make, so many, make so many mistakes, you finally just wipe it out and start it from new. Yes. You can do that with parchment. You can't do that with papers. Yeah. You can't do that and with And you'd papyrus. have to do it with parchment. It's too expensive to throw away, so you've got to reuse it. Yes. Yeah. So that's what a polymcest right. is. Okay, so they looked at this. This yeah. is now this is first discovered in 1975. We're now in 2017. That's 43 years ago. That finally they came up Hasma Hilali, Dr. Hasma Hilali came up with this book called The Sana Pan. We'll just put it up on the screen there. Now there have been a number of scholars. Look on the slide there. I want you to look at the slide. Dr. Garrett Prynne, Dr. Elizabeth Prynne, that's mother, I mean that husband and wife, not mother and son. Husband and wife, <laughs> they're both doctors that are paradox. And also with uh, Sadegi and <laughs> Gudarzi. I don't know if everyone would have got that <laughs> joke, Jay. Pair of docs. Did anybody get that? Pair of docs. Pair yeah. of docs. Okay. I get it now, yeah. <laughs> Sadegi and Gudazi have also done work on this, and also uh, Hasma, Hasma Hilali. These are the only ones who have really have now published on mm. this manuscript. What's fascinating is that the underlayer, there are only 63 verses in the underlayer, the lower layer that they have found. Yeah. Within the lower layer, and you compare it with the upper layer, the upper layer is dated to around 705. Mm -hmm. Right. The under layer, they're, claim, they're claiming that it could be dated all the way back to 671. Oh, right. So like 35 Quite years early. earlier. Something. How did they come to that conclusion? But that's 20 years oh, yeah. after the Uthmanic How, did, how would extension? you come to that conclusion? It'd be quite hard to do, but maybe the style of the script. Carbon or dating? I don't know. You can't. You no. can't. I'm guessing it's impossible. You can't yeah. do it. And yeah. here's what's more. Yeah. If the upper layer is 705, yeah. would you sit and wait 30 years before you wrote the upper layer? No, of course not. <laughs> or more than that. So they just came the, out with this number, but there's they no They just there's came no out with this number because they're reasoning. saying that the, that the manuscript itself, the parchment itself could be dated back then. But what is the parchment? What is the dating with Robert, uh, carbon dating for parchments? How did we get to those? Oh, yeah, that would be so hard to do. You'd have to cut into it, wouldn't you? So, You'd have to cut it, but uh, yeah. that is when the animal died, right? Yeah, it's yeah. when the animal died. It's not so when it then, was necessary an actual parchment. No, because so, they may on. store them for decades before they use these things, in truth. But okay. Yeah. So let's just say, let's just say, for for the sake of, of argument, let's just say it was written in 671. Yeah. Let's say because that's most likely. Yeah. I don't think it is. Is it I th not? I think it's 690. 690. But you'll see Go why. On Go on then. You'll this is nine. good. But let's just, that's for another day. It's like a detective day. story. So yeah. we've got the upper layer and we do a comparison. There's 63 verses down there, right? Right. 
and yet you found 70 variants between the lower layer and the upper mm. layer. Why though? Within 63 How? verses. Because it's all being copied from the perfect original, isn't it? Well, what's the original? Well, we've already just said there's these nine perfect copies the around. The 705 upper text is the earliest oh, yeah. that we've ever found. Oh, all yeah. All these other five that we talked yeah. about, the top copy, the summer count, all come after the song. Oh, yeah, that's right. In dating. Yeah. So this is a so, lower layer that predates all of them. So it this doesn't lower level effect. must be amazing. It doesn't even agree with the upper layer. What? But now, I thought this lower level must be perfect then. Yes, you thought so, right? Yeah, that's why mm -hmm. I'm searching. It must be. Now, but it Asma doesn't Hilali agree with any of the other here. Qurans, does so it? Then, it doesn't agree with any of the other Qurans. What? It's a completely different But style. this is the earliest. It doesn't agree with the Quran we have today, this book here, and it doesn't agree with the upper layer. So this is what they're saying. This is what Asma Hilani, she's a Muslim. She has to come up with some type of excuse. So what yeah. does she say? These are. This is a schooled text. A what? Now, a schooled text. Do you know that, what that means? Yeah, so that quite a lot of the early Qurans, um, in, it's like a student. It's a student. So it's the text of a student rather than but actual student, reliable on, authority on, text. On a parchment, and that is this is like a, like a, some student trying out stuff. So on a got, parchment. See, he's never heard this before. You can see why you, you're. You why can't on you? a parchment. That's like that's like too expensive for some kid to be messing about. Can you with. see the stupidity yeah, of it? I, mean, that's I should say stupid. Ridiculous. But can you see this no, is the kind of level, believable. and this is the that's level that Muslim scholars have to go to to no, try to explain no, what's going on here. No, she can't have meant that. That's not believable. Hypothetically, let's just go ahead and say this is a school text. No, okay? on a parchment okay, from a are, gazelle. Okay, here's the next question. If this is a school text, okay. where did they get this from? Yeah, what, well, they, yeah, where's that being copied from? Where's the original? Yeah, where's the original? I, I would hope that if you're studying the Quran, yeah. you would try to do it as accurately as possible. Yeah, if you're writing the Quran, you would write it so down. So you can as see there's an investment here in that argument. Because by comparison, again, when you said Codex Sinaiticus or Vaticanus or all these ones that are on parchments, when we examine the accuracy of them, we do find variants, but they're very, very tiny because just, people are so careful copying these. So this is people who should be even more careful, and it turns out you're saying that there's quite big variants. Let's, let's look at right okay, here. Let's, look on this, let's, let's put this, this up on the slide so here. Begin to wind, wrap up these arguments and we can, move, we can do we'll this more. Let's keep so this interesting. Is chapter we can do this 9 verse episode. 18. In the Song of Palimpsest it says, He did jihad in the name of Allah and did not fear but Allah, those who are successful. In the modern current version yes, right, it says, He preferred the Salat, gave Zakat, and did not fear but Allah, they who are on true guidance. So they've added Salat and Zakat to the verse has been added to this that is not there that's, in the lower text. That's really quite different. Yes. You're starting much to get to... Much more evolved, much more detailed. Yes, much yeah. more. Can you see the problem? Now let's look at this one here. I'm just going to give you two out of the 63 that yeah. we have. Here's another one. This is chapter 9, verse 80. Allah does not forgive them. Indeed, Allah does not forgive. Now in the modern version it says, Allah will not forgive them because they disbelieve in Allah and His Prophet and Allah does not guide. Well, that's obviously somebody developing and just adding. They've a, added the yeah, Shahada in there. Yeah, aren't they? A God and His Prophet. I mean, that's obvious to me. So before the 8th century, Allah and His Prophet are not there. After the 8th century, now Allah and His Prophet are there. Oh, yeah, that, that's obviously what's going on here? been developed. That's there's why a, it's fascinating. I, I'm just giving you just to get wet your appetite because it's going to get worse as we get into the it gets worse. continental no, text. No, it can't get worse than this, It gets Jay. worse as we get into the dire critical material. No, but material. this is already a disaster. So can you see then why Sana manuscript are, they're not supporting the Sana manuscript no, I can see, since 2017. The Yemeni government have got to have, I can see why they quickly wanted to get but control But I find it that. fascinating yeah. that we've not seen massive um, news broadcasts about this. But why isn't this um, on the BBC? <laughs> exactly. This is not politically correct. Oh no, okay, there is that. But this is just truth. That, this is incredible stuff. Listen, I tried to introduce yeah. this in Hong Kong last November. Yeah. The man that was going to do debate me never showed up, and then they had me banned from the university. We were already ready to go the day before. It's too explosive. It, this is, and this is not the most explosive. We're just we're still getting up to that. But if this is as bad as you're finding out, can you wait till you see what we're going to come up with? So this is the poem says shows that there is an evolution between the lower. Oh and the yeah, upper there's decks. clear development. The earlier you go, and then it obviously gets bigger, and people add explanations and things. But it's a, it's an evolving text. That's what I'm getting from this. So Elizabeth Wynn, who has also written a book on this. She says, "Hold on a minute." Now she has no invested. She has no investment yeah. in any theology. She's not. I mean, I don't know. If she claimed to be a Christian or not. I don't think she and uh. her husband do. But they were not. They are scholars and scholars first. So they're not coming with a bias. They're not coming with an agenda. They're looking at the same thing that Zuga, uh, Zuga, uh, uh, let me get his name now. Zuga, uh, Shadarzi 
and also Asma Hilali are coming through. These are and, the other scholars who are studying this particular text. But they're not text. Muslims. These are yeah. Western scholars who have also looked at the text. Her, res her uh, summation is, looks like this is the beginning of a nascent Quran, the lower text. Yeah, yeah. that's what it seems to be. That's me. why it's written on parchment. Yeah. But as they are changing it and, and they're having to yeah, change it and change it, it and change yeah. it, they finally had to scratch, wipe it all off, and then write over top of it. Yeah. This is what happens when you write any text. Yeah, yeah that's how you develop a document. And we make editorial changes and you scrap it, start again. Of course, that's what see, we do. And see, when you do that initially yeah. and you wash yeah. it off, it does really wash off and there's yeah, nothing yeah. to show for it. Hundreds of years later, though, the ink starts to bleed through. Yeah. They didn't realize that 1,400 years ago the it. ink would bleed through. Yeah. Nor did they realize that we would have ultraviolet, ultraviolet light yeah. that could actually separate the two layers. So that's that today amazing. now we're looking at, can you see the problem yeah. for the Muslims now? This is shows human imprint all the way yeah. through it. This Jay, proved that's to me. brilliant. Uh, we're going to end right there. Oh. Human imprint on the Quran. We're seeing it as evidential before us. Yeah. Uh, you can see it on the screens as well. Um, this From is the 7th to the 8th century. Yeah, this yeah. is amazing Incredible. material. Incredible. And we do need to investigate it because we are people of truth, aren't we? We are yeah. concerned for truth. We want to find out um, what the Quran really does teach or how did it evolve? Is it really from God? We need to ask these questions um, because we are people of truth and we want to discover the truth. We ask the same questions of our Bible. We've got yeah. to ask the questions of the Quran. Hold it right there. We are going to continue with this topic in the next episode. Thank you, Jay, for informing us. And <laughs> I love your interaction. <laughs> it's great. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.